as the web has evolved, the client side has evolved. So we've seen changes in terms of how browsers interact with web servers. The early days, I fetched a static document. Then I fetched a document that might have been rendered by the server. Now I fetch a bunch of JavaScript that runs in my browser, interacts with me, and might never cause the entire page to be reloaded because it's just exchanging data with the server in the background. At the same time, the story on the back end or on the web server has also changed and evolved quite a bit. And we've seen the rise of what are sometimes known as web interfaces or web APIs. So what is a web API? Um, a web API or web interface is a way for a service to expose capabilities using, um, using URLs and using web commands. So, for example, rather than uh, fetching a get that would return a web page, I can use a get to get a list of users. I could, uh, if I was using YouTube, I might be able to use a get to get a list of videos. Um, and I can actually also use those interfaces frequently to accomplish things. The videos that we upload for this class are not uploaded through the YouTube um, you know, the YouTube interface that you might use normally. We don't sit there and click upload over and over again. We have hundreds of these things that would take forever. So instead what we've done is we've used the fact that YouTube has a public web interface and we're using that interface with some programs that we wrote to push videos at the server, uh, set the titling, set the content, and have that process all be automated. So let me give you an example. that You can find a lot of examples of web interfaces online. And this is actually kind of exciting because what this allows you to do is it allows you to write code that does things programmatically with YouTube. So rather, you know, if you have 100 videos that you need to upload to YouTube, you could sit there for three days, like on their, you know, on their, um, you know, browser interface, like clicking the upload button, or you could spend a day or two writing a piece of code using YouTube's API that would then run in, you know, 10 minutes and upload all 100 videos very quickly. So. Here's an example. Uh, this web interface is provided by the authentication provider that we use for this website. It's called Auth0. And this is something else that we, we also use. So the accounts on this site that we set up manually are done using Auth0's uh, web interface. And, and this is quite complicated. There's a gazillion different commands and different things. Uh, but let me just show you one example here. Um, so if I want to list users that I've already set up as part of um, my particular authentication scope. So Auth0 gives me the ability to create users in the context of a particular site. If I want to list those users, uh, they provide an endpoint for doing that. So you'll see here that there's a couple of important uh, pieces of information I need to know to use this. The first is what type of command is supported here? And one of the things that we try to do when we design web interfaces is use the HTTP requests appropriately. So this is a case where I'm not changing anything on the server. I'm just asking for information about the users that already exist. And so the right HTTP verb to use in this case is get. It then tells me what the, uh, the URL is that I'm going to use. So it's slash API slash version 2. They version their API. So when they move forward to version 3, they can replace this. And then users. Now you might notice like there's there's not enough information here like how do I know which users to get and there's there's all this extra information right here um, and I can use this. This is an inter, this is a common sort of uh, example of an interface explorer. So I can use this tool to design calls to their backend interface um, that have and, and there's lots of different sort of fields and things I can set. So this is almost like you can think of it as making a function call. I'm making a function call. Um, the name of the function is API v2 users, and these are all different parameters to the function that I can use to determine uh, what the output looks like. Um, so, and, and then, of course, the question is, what do I get back? So this is very common over here. Um, sorry, this is create a user. Let me go back to list or search users. So um, rather than returning HTML, what do I get back from this web interface? I get back JSON. So this is a JSON object. Uh, you can see it's a list of user objects. And then the user object has all these different fields on it. So for example, the email, whether the email has been verified, username, blah, 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 blah. Maybe I set some of these. Um, maybe, maybe I didn't. So, uh, and so I would get back a JSON array of user objects with information about the users matching the query that I've issued. Now let's look at a different command. Um, so this is how I would create a user. Now this is different than listing, right? So remember, when I'm listing, I'm not changing anything about the world. 
when I retrieve a list of users from the server, nothing about the world has changed, and so get is the right command to use. When I create a user, I am changing something about the world. There's a user that exists on my system that didn't anymore, and I'm gonna do that using post. So I'm using the HTTP uh, verb post, which is allowed to change things. Same thing here, I'm posting to, so it's interesting, I'm posting to the same endpoint. Um, and what I'm gonna do is it says, creates a new user according to the JSON object received in body. So in the body of the post request, I'm gonna put my own JSON object. That object's gonna describe information about the users I want to create. And assuming that that goes okay, and I've set everything properly, because I can certainly give it a bad object and it won't know what to do. Um, but if all that goes correctly, I get this information back from the server when the request completes. So again, this is an example of, um, I shouldn't say it's a simple, it's a fairly complicated uh, web interface. Um, but you can use these, you know, one of the exciting things about the world of computing today is so many services that we use have these interfaces. Google has them for all of their products. Uh, you know, so again, you can programmatically interact with uh, YouTube and all the other Google services, Google Drive and things like that in really powerful ways. And so you can write programs against these public web interfaces that accomplish all sorts of really cool things in the cloud. And the way they're doing that is by using this interface that's exposed over the web and sending and receiving data, you know, sometimes in JSON, sometimes in XML, sometimes in other formats. Um, but this is a, a very, very common way today that companies and other uh, providers expose functionality to the world.